everyone hope you guys are doing well we're back with a different type of video here this is the haul from a storage unit guy by you guys hear me reference him all the time storage unit guy is one of my biggest sources he has a garage sale on sundays that i go to after church and lunch and everything with the family pretty much go almost every week i'd say probably it ends up being three out of the four sometimes he won't be there or every once in a while I have something coming up um he buys so much stuff so many storage units it's hit and miss what is going to be there most of the time I can find some stuff and sometimes I spend quite a bit and I've found some of my best deals there. He's a really great guy, really grown to enjoy. I'm just kind of the haggle with him and talking about life and stuff because while we're there we'll chat. But um, he's one of those guys where he knows enough where I'm not getting the garage sale price for stuff. You're paying up, he's buying it, this is his life, his way of making money so you have to keep that in mind. Um, I spent a bunch of money on some stuff that I wasn't really sure. I didn't really have um, a way to look everything up while I was there. He was kind of right near me, so I didn't want to look everything up in front of him. And some of it's just, I've sold some of the stuff before, but some of it I haven't. And I was just kind of took a chance on it, made an offer. Um, we went back and forth. And some other people were around me kind of interested in some of the stuff I wanted too. So maybe that played a role and maybe why I paid up more than I may, have sh I may should have. So I'm looking for your guys' opinion. Look at what I have here. I'll give you some information because some things have already started to sell, just to be fair. Tell me where you were going to be at if you would have buy it or you weren't going to buy it. Did I pay too much? Just give me some kind of feedback on it. Let me know what you guys are thinking because at the end of the day, I'm just a regular guy like everybody else. I don't know everything. I take chances. Um, fortunately, after this for so many years, I've been able to build up you know, a knowledge base that gives you some information on some things. And I had enough capital to take some chances. I didn't, I'm not going to lose money. There's no, I'll make at least my money back, but I'm curious if you think it was a good deal, not so good, what you would have paid. Just let me know what you guys are thinking. And um, here we go. Okay, guys, here we are with the hall part. You should have saw that first clip there. The intro there, this is kind of everything we have here. Ignore this box over here. That plastic bin is not. It is these buckets here, all this stuff where my hand is, all that is part of this hall. And again, I'll be fair, I'll tell you a couple things that have sold just so you guys kind of have an idea and can factor that into what you think. So all this that I bought here, look at it now. Again, those are reel-to-reels -reels for anyone who doesn't know. There's some more reel-to-reels -reels there, some remotes, a camera, a bunch of books. There's a Nintendo Power. Those are all stuff for a TRS-80 uh, Radio Shack machine. So if you don't know what it is, we'll learn a little bit about it, but you can always look it up. Um, there's more stuff. Here's a sealed game. A bunch of rainbow magazines, a zip drive. This was a KitchenAid, um, well, it is a KitchenAid parts uh, for a food processor. Some are missing, we'll go over that. A bunch of Philips bulbs, 24. Some old, um, like, engineering kits for kids to kind of make a little siren. Don't know if they're complete. A Midway game, two phones. I already cleaned that one because it's listed. Again, remotes. Um, that is a dock for a laptop. So that is everything. There are a couple other things, actually. There's an Xbox. An original Xbox, no, no cords. have no idea if it works yet. There is a PS2. It's broken. The buttons on it are broken. I can tell from the outside. So I don't know if there's anything good for parts there. There also are a couple more magazines. Some cassettes that go to, like, radio commercials and stuff. I don't know if they have any value yet, but I don't think they'd have that much. If so, and a couple of odds and ends. But nothing um, too crazy. And then we have sold a few things. So... Let's get in to show you guys. I'll tell you what I get paid at the end. You guys let me know. And again, it's just kind of to see where everybody is. The cool thing about this business is we're all different. Some of us will buy things that others won't. Some of us will take more chances. Some of us are still learning where we're not ready to take that chance yet, but we hope to be there. So that's okay too. And if you wouldn't buy this, it's okay to tell me you wouldn't. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have bought it. This could be a learning thing for me. Could be a learning thing for all of us. So these are real to real tapes. They are... Um, used ones, they're recorded with mostly movies, um, it says album, album, but there's the Godfather on there, one of them has Star Wars, um, some of old TV shows, stuff like that, Star Trek, and just a whole bunch of stuff. You can see these two boxes are jammed full. It's actually about 75, I think, in total. This is what, this box has some other ones, some that are loose, some that are just reels that have no tape on them, and then some empty boxes, so nothing too much to worry there. This is a game, it is... It's um, a game for a IBM or a Tandy. That one is in there, but all that right there was part of it. Um, what you do when you're going to sell these, you sell them as use reel to reels, um, and then people do buy them. You can't really advertise that they're what the recordings are too much, but you can say they're used and people buy them. I will say there is a market sometimes for old media that has home recordings or 
different stuff on them because people want to maybe get old commercials or old stuff that's not on VHS, DVD, or some newer format. So there can be a market sometimes for that. Over here, these are some more games. These are Science and Logic. Rocky's Boots games are sealed, two of them. Boxes are kind of crushed. Another game here for the Tandy. This is Greg Norman's Shark Attack. I mean, I think we all played that as a kid. Uh, here we go, some four-color plotter paper. So these are three rolls of paper that go to um, the TRS-80, like, printer. Uh, you can see there's six boxes. They're all brand new. So that's pretty good. Um, that's a serious uh, docking station and an antenna. We just threw that in there. Here's a Bioware Mass Effect collector's edition book. Not worth a whole much if you, just to give you a little sneak peek, that one's not worth a whole lot. Um, we just throw it in the pile though. This is a brand new um, Dynadoc for a Toshiba. This is a version 3.0. Um, this one, yeah, it's brand new. The box is kind of beat up though, but the inside is all sealed up. A bunch of cool um, little Radio Shack color computer game books like spectacular bedlam there's i don't know what that one is there's like a madness and the minotaur the sands of egypt you guys can't even see it had a bad angle and then these are a bunch of trs 80 computer newses kind of like a and you not an annual but like a monthly uh, magazine that was going out about these vintage computers there's another one there and then these ones are all manuals for the Tandy and the TRS-80. So a bunch of those. They kind of piqued my interest initially when I was first there because they had a lot of cool artwork in the game books. And to be fair, I already sold one book out of here. One of those adventure books. They should have a cartridge that comes with it or a cassette that you can use with the machine. This is just the game book part. I sold one game book for 20 bucks ship. So just so you guys keep that in mind. Um, here is a... Who is this? Sublime, I think. This is a like disc and dvd set yeah there's a couple little bit of scratching this but it is complete so that was just a throw in another game there's actually two of these there's another one you guys won't see but where in the world is carmen san diego i remember this not on the tandy but you can kind of see what it was little jack there and his sister jill just probably wanting to play this game but no anyways these are um they're sealed vintage games i'm sure the market is not great the demand is not but obviously sealed video games can always be worth something uh radio shack tears this is the color printer here no power cord no cords no way to see if it works it's in pretty good shape though these were cool as well these are rainbow magazines the color computer monthly i want to say we have 30 something of them they are listed, but you can see this is a whole whole box full of them here. Um, so that was pretty cool. These are those little kits here, solderless electronics kit. You can kind of see. I don't know if they're complete, but they're from the 90s called Mr. Circuit. Here's a cool game. If it's complete, it has a little bit of value. Midway, the Midway story. It's an Avalon Hill. Avalon Hill stuff is pretty good. I haven't checked this one yet. It is obviously used, so I'll have to check the pieces on it. So we'll see. Yearbooks. If I didn't buy a yearbook from him, since he buys storage units, a lot of times people have yearbooks in there. Recently I sold, it hasn't showed up in the in one of the sold videos yet, but it will here in a couple weeks. Um, I sold like a hundred bucks worth of yearbooks in one weekend. I sold two sets of two. And they were individual listings, but the same buyer bought for each set, bought them. So that was a great deal. So your books still sell. Don't pay a lot for them. If you get an offer that's like 20 or 25 or above, just take it and move on. Um, here's another game, Sports Illustrated Handicap Golf Game. So that was in there. Um, these are some phones. Vintage phones do well, but I would say if you're going to get them, the colored ones do the best. You don't want a plane when you want one that's like a pink or a yellow or something. This red one was awesome. This one does work. I tested it out, called myself, and I could hear and I could communicate. That one's great. This one has not been tested, but we'll get that one cleaned up. Um, so that's pretty cool. I've sold these before. A couple other things, remotes. Um, one of my favorite guys, newer guys to watch, Positively Hustling. Hopefully I'll put a link to him. I've mentioned it before. He always buys remotes, sells them. I buy them too. And the thing is, is usually I can just throw them into a pile and they don't, they're not worth the whole, not like adding to the total i think this one's like a 20 dollar, like a 10 dollar, like a 12 
and maybe like a 20 or so. So they all work, testing them out with a little camera trick that you can do if you don't know about it. It's on YouTube somewhere you could find it. It's pretty simple. But um, again, that might be some decent money there. They ship first class, put them in a bubble mailer if you need to, or a small box and you can get them out of here. Here's a little plug in power and appliance light control for the TR City that was also found in there. This is pretty old, I think. It's a Disco Clean Deluxe. The Disco Clean has been designed to provide a simple but effective method to dry cleaning. So, yeah, that's awesome. Who wouldn't want this? Buy realistic. Hope we don't break it. And from 1977, still in the packaging. So, obviously, there is the tear there, but. This was a Canon um, power shot. It's a 12 megapixel, but 12 megapixels aren't bad. The problem is, just to be fair, when I tested it out, uh, it takes beautiful pictures, but when you go to shift to a different setting, like if you want to do a video or you want to do like a portrait or how it op offers like different kind of photo settings, it like freaks out. It like starts going, changing back from all these different settings unless you put it on photo. So I don't know. That is what it is. Whoever's better with computers may be able to tell us. Um, this already sold. This is a zip drive. Look out for them. Some are worth more than others. This one is brand new in the box, but the box looks like it's sat in the sun in a garage sale or a flea market for years. But the inside is all good. It's all sealed up. Got everything. That sold for 72 bucks on a best offer. So keep that in mind. This was the KitchenAid. We're down to some blades. <coughs> Excuse me. And a mini bowl. Um, I have sold three, four things out of here, five things out of here. We sold six things out of here. I'm not sure. I sold a bowl for 45, a lid for 40. I sold a pusher for 20. I sold a stem for 18. And I sold one blade for 27. And I sold an egg whip attachment for 18. Whoever's good at math, uh, I have a math degree too, which is sad, but like I know nothing about adding. But of course, when you just to be fair, when you get to advanced math, it has nothing to do with numbers anymore. But either way, um, yeah, I sold all those already. So that's a pretty good amount. And that is off one food processor. If I sold the thing as a whole unit, I may have got 100 shipped, but it would have weighed a ton. And you got to worry more about returns or whatever. So I think when you sell a part, you're better off. You don't, I don't have many returns on the parts unless someone buys the wrong one. So we still have a few left, but keep that in mind in your pricing. And then here we have a bunch of Philips lights. It's a 24, a case of 24. They're all brand new um, in here. So that was pretty cool. And one other thing that did sell was I sold some used Maxell XL2 35 by 90 or whatever uh, reel to reels. They were used. I had four of them. They sold for 60 bucks in a day. So that was a good listing. Maybe I'll flash on the screen if I remember to, just so you guys can see what it was. But all that is what I bought, aside from the stuff that I didn't show you guys. I have never really sold real turtles before, to be honest. Um, I have never sold Tandy or Rainbow magazines. Um, I've heard of a Tandy and a TRS-80 before, but I've never come across it. This sale had literally boxes everywhere. Of It was so unorganized. It was just cardboard boxes like this little um, paper boxes file boxes with like trash mixed in with books and all kinds of stuff i had to go through and find what i did it was basically chaos but also very exciting because that's the treasure hunt point of it that's what i really love just to be real honest is i love the treasure hunt part the part where you're looking you don't you're digging around you never know what you're going to find and then you pull out just something amazing and sometimes not amazing. Sometimes it's boxes and boxes of basically decon rat extermination stuff, and it's going to sell for a lot of money, but that makes it fun. So I'm sure you guys enjoy that part of it. Most of this is listed. Some of the pile right here is not, but the magazines, all this is listed. All these are listed. That whole box is, and that box is, and the one phone is. So that's everything, guys. I spent $410 on all this. Um, and that's a lot. It's a lot for some stuff that you're not sure about. Um, my total listings so far, I want to say, are 1900 or something like that. But keep in mind, to be fair, that's not really going to be what I get because I'm going to take offers. You know, I put offers on some things. We can't expect everything to sell for full price or if I run a sale, promoted listings, factor out your fees. So... I think I'm going to make money. I want to know what you guys think. Would you have bought it? Would you have jumped on it? I wanted to pay. This is where I wanted to be at was 300. 
I really only wanted to pay 300 When I talked to my father-in-law, he was with me. I said, hey, 300 bucks for all this. I mean, I'm taking a chance. I know he needs to make some money, but also a poor guy. He recently lost a brother, passed away. So it was a rough time for him. And I know financially there's some stuff that accompanies that. So I'm sure that played a part in the dealing because he wouldn't come down at all. I eventually got him to 400 And then when I was walking out, I found another box of reel to reels and I gave him 10 bucks for it. Um, which I'm glad I did because I sold those ones that already sold. So yeah, I paid a lot guys. Let me know. And if you say, Hey, I wouldn't buy all this. That's cool too, because everybody's doing it differently. And some of you are smarter than me and you're just here to see if you can pick up a couple things. If you're newer and you say, you know, I wish I could spend that much money. Keep at it guys. Because there was one time when I was starting, I had 20 bucks to spend and I've built up and I've learned and I've kept going and going and going. And that's how you get to this point to make bigger buys is you keep building on what you have, putting money back into your business, learning new things to sell, making connections and stuff does improve. Uh, Thank the Lord for that, because otherwise we would still be here just scrounging around with our 20 bucks at a garage sale. So that's not a means to brag. It's just to be encouraging to you guys that you guys can do this. You can make money. You can find stuff to sell. You can buy stuff out of your comfort zone. Let 2020 be the year that you guys go out there and just keep building that business and making videos or telling me stuff that I can learn from. So if you have any feedback, I appreciate it, guys. Thank you for watching. I know it's a different style of video. I love what sold videos. I will still do those and they'll be posted where it clearly says is the what sold video. Um, I'm going to add some of these videos in here too, though, because I do think some people can learn from this. And I actually like doing these too, just to show you guys the kind of entirety of what I buy sometimes. So again, thank you guys. Hope you are doing well. Hope the sales are great. And then also if you have any questions, let me know. Take care.